everyone and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is Jim Skork and with me I have Norman Sanso. Hello. Ah, no, some brownie reviewer, Silver Quill. Hello. You know, I think I'm going to stop int introducing you as awesome anything something because you have that sound box that makes everything everything for me. So yeah, no more of no more cool intros for you. It's okay, I can make my own. Oh, there is no winning with, with with you. God damn it! That's <laughs> that's right. I have the power of the people who are recorded <laughs> in the sound box. They're people, just not necessarily my people. <laughs> oh, well, you, YouTubers don't count either. We know that they are not human. <laughs> you know, I, am, <sighs> I am on YouTube and I can guarantee you, I'm not human. <laughs> <laughs> you are a Borg. All shall be assimilated. Uh, you shall upvote. We, Resistance is futile. We are already off the rails on this episode. <laughs> Uh, because today we are reviewing, uh, the Friends Forever issue number six, uh, th that is the one starring Rainbow Dash and Trixie. Written by Tom Saylor and with art by, uh, Agnes, Agnes Garbowska. Um, and I'm kind of out of practice on this one already. <laughs> we haven't done this one in a while. <laughs> oh. Um. Uh, but I think we shall right away call out for the spoilers, uh, for a spoiler warning. If we are going to talk about what, what we think of the comic and what is it about and all that. Yep, yep. Yeah, because this one is kind of a comic that is, that is very reliant on the, on the element of surprise. That, uh, then again, well, kind of has to do when Trixie is around, mm -hmm. doesn't she? It's almost a, it's almost a running theme with her. Um, oh, and fair warning, this takes place before the Manhattan, um, Diamond Mystery Arc. Continuity uh, <laughs> no notices. Yeah, and uh, the the well, the fact that they do make reference to that one, co this one comic in particular in that arc. But yeah, okay, so uh, guys, we're going to jump right deep into the spoilers. Uh, we're going to go right into them. So if you want to read the comic, uh, stop now and go give it a watch. It's on the comic so it's on Comicsology, and you can also. Uh, uh, buy it on physical format in any website that has comics. Um, but from now on, we're going to start talking the comic away. So, uh, like always, like, uh, stop now and come back because it's a spoiler territory for, it's a spoiler country from now on. So be wary. Be wary. Oh god, I completely botched that. But, okay, so, uh, we shall go, like always, alphabetical order inverted. So, silver, you are first in line. Well, I gotta say, this comic felt a lot like the last one, the Zakura and Fluttershy Micro, in that you took two uh, popular characters together, put them in a story, but never True. got the sense that they really connected in a way that really gave the story a lot of meaning as friends forever. <laughs> if you look at the track record, I think Rainbow Dash has every reason not to be Trixie's friend. That said, it's more energetic... Uh, than, than the Fluttershy and Zakura Micro. And also, we get to see both Rainbow and Trixie's skills in full effect, working together. So while I don't get the sense that they connect on a friendship level, or we see, we can instantly see, uh, the, the similarities between their personas, uh, it, it is a more entertaining and interesting, uh, comic, especially with the inclusion of the, uh, residents of Daimondia. <laughs> the thing then, is, though, uh, I'm, Diamond Dogs, yes, ex exactly. But I, uh, I was hoping for a little bit of parallel learning because these are two of the most ego-driven ponies in the entire show. Yeah, you have these two characters with such strong personalities to each other that they they are absolutely full of themselves, and you put them together, you expect a bit more of a bit a bit more on that regard. But it, well, you know what I. I actually didn't think about it that way, but you are absolutely right when you say they don't interact that much as uh, friends forever. Like the same way that uh, Shining Armor and uh, Twilight would interact in their comic, or uh, hell, the same way that Applejack and Pinkie Pie will interact in the in the even in the first issue. 
in, in this one, they feel like they are just talking about solving the plot. They're like, okay, you go there, you go here, we're going to plan this out, and we have to get out of here, and we have to do this and that, and there is not much room for the characters to breathe. Yeah, they're just focused on one another's plots. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was about to make a joke regarding uh, regarding Christopher Nolan and the way that he writes every single movie nowadays, that every single piece of dialogue is about explaining the story and what is going to happen next, because it's important. And we have to make it epic. Uh, <laughs> Man of Steel. But, the uh, yeah, I, I, I think that the problem with the comic is that I agree with you on that on that regard. What about you, Norman? What do you think? I, I don't know. I mean, when I first read this one, I, I, was, I was thinking in my head where, okay, this is going to be two of the best performers on stage because the queen or whatever country is call, calling them uh, calling Rainbow Dash and Trixie for an invite so to perform so now Trixie and Rainbow Dash need to work together to do the best performance if not they'll go to jail or something like that and yeah I, I never thought that Trixie was the queen so yeah mm-hmm. very very confusing and the story I don't know I mean I was not how do I put this? This is just a meh for me. Really? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting and all, but it's in, in the end, it's just meh. Now the question is, is this going to be like the Rainbow Dash Micro, where the world was united in a, in a tone of meh? I don't think so. By the by, the sounds of James, he kind he likes it. Yeah, I don't know. Well, no, uh, because I completely agree with what you guys are saying, is that to me, these are not deal breakers uh, when it comes to enjoying the comic. Although, now that I think about it, with your comment, reg- uh, your comment Silver, regarding this is, uh, this has the same problems as the uh, Fluttershy and Sakura Micro, well, look who's writing it. It's Tom Saylor, the guy who wrote the, uh, the Fluttershy and Sakura Micro. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's, a th- that's, I think, a problem that the writer has. Um, that maybe he focuses too much in resolving the story instead of developing the characters. It's a criteria, friends forever. This is about two friends. And okay, maybe they're not, you know, friends in the truest sense of the word, but you could start something to build a friendship. Having two ponies just tackle the plot. Ooh, oh my. Oh my god. This is going to be a running theme. Oh! But- <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, just trying to have them deal with the issue and never really expressing their characters, that just doesn't work in this setting. That might fly in the main series, but even then I think people would be like, whoa, that was kind of lacking in character. The Bronies are all about the character, baby. Well, that's, oh. that's the thing. When you have a, when you have a show that is, basi- that is it's based on the characters... Uh, we have always said that the stories in Friendship is Magic are nothing, nothing, uh, unusual. They are not very innovative. You know, they're, they're, they're basically the hero journey extended upon several seasons. Um, if we were going to follow the story of Toilet Sparkle, for example, but you can apply that to any of the other characters. But it's like the, 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 the show is based on characters. When you don't have character to work with, you have to rely very much in a story, and basically the story in this issue is not all that important. It is not all that uh, impressive, which, by the way, we should talk about the story and what the comic is about, because we're just giving our opinion without saying what, what's going on in the comic. Go ahead, man. The true forum approach. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> this is what happens in the Christian Daily. Um, eh, never mind that, uh, but yeah, this, the, the story in this comic, uh, Rainbow Dash gets a letter from the kingdom of Diamondia, right? And uh, she's told to go there as an entertainer. And she discovers that Diamondia first is full of diamond dogs, and second, the queen of Diamondia is none other than Trixie. And uh, why is Trixie? And why did Trixie ask for her uh, to arrive? Because Trixie needs to get out of Diamondia because they confuse her for a gem finder. And now she's trapped in there forever because of that crown that she has on her head. So the rest of the comic is Dash and Trixie trying to figure out a way to get Trixie out of that place before they, I don't know, what were they going to do to her if she turned out to be a fake 
because I don't really remember. I, I don't think they actually explain it too much. They're just really dumb, and Trixie wants to get out of there. In fact, I guess when we go through the comic, I'll point to the two panels that are just like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> yeah, please let's 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 do that because I just read that synopsis out loud. And yeah, I think I was seeing this with a different pair of glasses. I don't think this this is the comic that I remember when yeah, reading yeah. it the first time. I haven't read this in a long time, actually. But okay, so uh, we start with uh, with a splash page of Rainbow Dash being none other than well, Rainbow Dash, because she's uh, she's like ooh, so so cool and all that. She's a swagger, <laughs> as one of the ponies calls her. A swagger or a saunter now? I vote for swagger. I vote for swagger as well. And after all, Rainbow Dash is... She has the reason to be... She has reasons to be, you know, so proud of herself. And uh, she's so happy because she received the letter that we just mentioned. And well, along with him up to go there. That was uh, very convenient, actually. I gotta say, the first... That splash page does not invoke confidence uh, in this story or artwork. You look around at the ponies, two on the left are, they are, look so fed up with Rainbow, which, as far as I know, pe- ponies in the, in the town are usually pretty fond of her. The other two on the opposite side, they look just fine and dandy. But in terms of artwork, I mean, I, I keep coming back to Rainbow's elevated hoof and the toothpick that's connecting it to her body. The foreshortening on that is just yee. Well, you know what? I I will give Agnes. Uh, uh, I am going. I'm completely botching everybody's name. I will give Agnes Garbowska a bit of lenience, saying that when you have a deadline, sometimes you have to sacrifice uh, proper anatomy and proper art, art techniques to get that comic out in out in time. I would understand the reason. I don't know how much time she had to work on this. Uh, but unfortunately, I can only talk about what I see in front of me. Of course, I also see I also see a, a pupils but no eyes apple bloom, which is quite terrifying. She's looking right at me. <laughs> She's staring <laughs> she, into my soul. She, has she the knows my secrets. <laughs> she has the face <laughs> of a hostess doll. Ah! No, yeah, you know what, I do have to, I, I, but I, uh, once again, I am agreeing with you and saying it is the first page that we see in the comic. The first page right away has a rather glaring, uh, glaring uh, flaw in the art, in the art style. That is not a good way to start your comic. Plus making your audience scream. I apologize. I think I heard that, that scream before. Hmm. Black memories. <laughs> like I was saying, in the next page, we see Rainbow Dash meeting up with the main six, and she shows them the letter that she got to go to the Amandia and meet up with this uh, dignitary, or whatever it is it's called, to do the entertainment. And the main six are so heartbroken about it. I mean, just look at them in that last panel. Oh. How, how could we go on with our lives? <laughs> never never seeing that place. Well, this Pinky's enthusiastic. And Fluttershy's ponder face. It is a very rare look to see. Ponder face Fluttershy. Ponder shy. The one that looks suspicious is Applejack, actually. It's with her duck face. <laughs> yeah, she's like, hmm. <laughs> you know, it's funny, just we're only two pages in, but the kind of the snark level of Ponyville has been amplified. And I think it's to show Rainbow can just have as much of a grating ego as a certain other pony who's yet to appear. Perhaps they did that, you know, to compensate all the ego that she can exhibit, but balance it out. Because ah. if you have if you have Rainbow Dash and Trixie, the two characters with the biggest egos in the entire show, in my opinion at least, um, you, you, you cannot have the rest of the characters not also showcase their egos uh, or being snarky or sarcastic about it. Um, you may fall into the, you know... You may ha- you may create too high a contrast that you make it almost not uh, not consistent enough. So perhaps making the making all of the characters a little bit more sarcastic was a, was a decision from that point of view. I think at least it doesn't seem out of character in my opinion. It doesn't seem out of character for them to say that, especially the way that Righty puts it with her raising her hoof and going ha ha ha. 
Oh yeah, it's just, it's just like when uh, Rainbow's talking about the story she wrote about the uh, one yeah. about the Ace Flyer who became head of the Wonderbolts. Wherever did you get such a plot? <laughs> oh, we're talking about the plot again. Every time the word comes up, it's just right there. It's just. Thank you, Brony Fandom, for ruining one of the most used words when it comes to describing a story. Yes, I know. <laughs> it's a double-edged sword. Mm. All because of that one meme picture. I watch it for the plot. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But, yeah, and as Rainbow Dash leaves, she arrives to the Amondia, and on the, right on the next page, Diamond Dogs. And I just realized something, is that every single page has... Uh, it's like super, it, this comic moves super fast. In three pages, we're already on a new setting, and the new setting turns out to be full of one of the most, you know, uh, ty- uh, season villains in the entire show. If we were to call the Diamond Dogs villains, after all. True. Very incompetent villains. Very incompetent. But if you think about it, moves too fast, almost doesn't leave you a moment to breathe or, or, or blink. If you're reading this on the Comixology app, like uh, like I did, you can still enjoy the surprise because you go panel by panel. But if you go, you are reading this like on a physical comic on on you know passing page by page, the surprise almost gets ruined immediately. This this comic relies heavily on just focusing on each one of the panels individually. Mm, true, true. I, I do feel that. Mm. I, I don't know. I mean, the way I look at this comic is from the very beginning. Me. <laughs> well, I, I can't. I can't say there are – it starts with a very simple premise. Rainbow has been called to do a show. Okay, we've we've seen her perform a lot, including in her own micro. Uh, she, I notice she's not bringing her guitar, <laughs> which so she can't make that awesome entrance. And maybe then, broke. Maybe broke. Yeah, she probably broke it on the stage. But uh, I don't know. I think they, they time it right with the Diamond Dogs appearing on the last panel. There's a que- it's a question though. Should they appear on the first panel of the next page, or the last panel of the current page, as a surprise? Well, is that uh, the way that I see it? It if this was like a movie, each page should be a scene. So it, it, I will keep the suspense going. Perhaps give Rainbow does another flying panel, getting closer, and have that po- that panel where she's like lifting her hoof, going attention everyone as the last panel, and then. You pass to the next page and boom, diamond dogs. And you can, you can avoid having to, um, uh, having to give these diamond dog guys so much dialogue only to explain, oh, but I'm not all diamond dogs are evil. And I'm like, since when did Tumblr turn into a diamond dog? That species but, yeah. is. <laughs> that species is. But yeah, I mean, when it comes to rhythm, perhaps that is my biggest gripe with this, with this comic. That might be a deal breaker for me and why it doesn't have a perfect score. Is that the rhythm is a bit, uh, for a comic, I know it's weird, usually rhythm is used for comic, for, uh, TV shows, movies, and music. But there is also a rhythm going to a visual, um, a visual media like a comic book. And I think this one is a little botched. And I don't know if it's Agnes, uh, Agnes Garbowska's fault or Tom Sellers' fault. But uh, th- th- there is something there that, uh, that doesn't work. And plus they rely on the 20% cooler meme, which, I don't know. It feels weird when uh, when something endorsed by Hasbro does it. It's like you don't get to use that meme. <laughs> we made it's that ours. meme. It's ours. It's our property. How dare you put Derpy on the show? She belongs on Fortune. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh boy. But anyway, so Dash arrives to the to the play to Di- Diamondia, and she she sees that it's full of diamond dogs and. Right away, she's uh, suspicious of this. She's like, what is going on here? I didn't know that there were diamond dogs in here. What, is this a trap? And the diamond dog is like, no, no, it's not a trap. Looks like you met with her more uh, rude bro- brothers or s- something like that. So apparently they are fine. They are okay. So Rainbow Dash agrees to go meet their queen. And this is, this, this kind of works. This is, this has to do with what I mentioned before. Uh, of delaying the, the surprise for the next page. Because on the next page, we figure out that... We, we see that the queen is none other than Trixie. Ba, ba, ba. Who already has a painting and everything. <laughs> they work fast. I'll, t- I'll give this to the Diamond Dogs. They're, they're quick workers. 
oh yeah, and good artists. They capture her likeness very well. <laughs> I don't know, that closed eye looks like a horseshoe to me. <laughs> uh, they're diamond it's like, dogs. It's like a it's like a Rorschach painting. I see a horseshoe. <laughs> I see the headlights of a truck. <laughs> I see a bunny. <laughs> We're kind of ripping off on on Agnes uh, Agnes's art style. I don't know. I feel a little bad for her from the artist's point of view. <sighs> uh, but, no, yeah. Uh, well, uh, sorry, but just on the on the artwork though, th- this is enjoyable artwork. I mean, she puts in good effort on shading. There's a it's a sort of that watercolor like style. Mm-hmm. I'm pointing out just the little things. The <laughs> Some of the series, the the things that stand out because the overall work is good. It is, it is, it is really good. I mean, she did the, she did the Spike Micro, the, the Trixie Manhattan Mystery Arc, and uh, she's also doing the the comic with the Dustlings, or for the Finship is Finship is Magic series. So she's she's really busy, really hard working, but yeah, sometimes. Hell, hell, it happens to me with my own art style. Sometimes you draw something and it looks like something completely different. So Trixie meets Rainbow Dash, she greets her and all that. And on the next page, it turns out that she doesn't want Rainbow Dash to entertain her, but she wants her to rescue her and get her out of there. In probably one of the, one of the best, uh, switches in attitude I have ever seen. <laughs> It's like, yeah. please, the queen has not given you leave to speak. Wait until you've got to get me out of here now. And when you talk about holding things on a surprise until the next page, this is a great example. I mean, to go for that from zero to help me in three seconds. <laughs> that was also fantastic because I was, it's so easy to write Trixie badly. Like, if you want to know how bad you can write Trixie, go watch the Turnabout Storm series on YouTube. That's the, uh, it, it is fan-made and everything, but it, it is probably the worst representation I have seen of Trixie. And I am so happy that the official comics and the, and the, and everything has actually, everything that has to do with, uh, with the official release has portrayed Trixie in a likable, flawed, still kind of full of herself, but still, you know, despite her being a pony, she's a very human character because she's very flawed. She just wants to be good, but she's just unlucky. And she just keeps getting things going bad her way. Uh, so it is very easy to not write the tricks you write, but in this one, she's great. I was so happy that they weren't going the the oh, is Trixie going to have Rainbow Dash dance and make make her full of herself because of what happened at Ponyville so many, many uh, so so many moons ago? Oh, here we go. But no, no, they don't do that. She actually calls her for her help. She's humble enough to call for one of the main six. That was that. That's something that I really enjoy. Although, if you want to talk about uh, sudden changes, this we're we're at the part where I was like, wait, what? Because ah, after yes. after, after yeah. Trixie becomes queen. Uh, and she's saying, so they made me their queen. And she's saying, it's good to be the queen. Then in the very next panel, the diamond dogs have disappeared. And she's like, it's not good to be the queen. <laughs> it's like, wait, what, what happened? What, what, how many seconds have passed after your <laughs> installment to make you say that? Come on. I, give, give information. I kind of fill in the blanks there. And I think that maybe a couple of months have, have, have passed or, Maybe there is a thing that Trix- Trixie doesn't want to be there anymore because she's bored and wants to move into another place, but they won't let her, lo- they won't let her go. So, but yeah, I, I can see where you are coming when you make that criticism. Is that, I, I just keep agreeing with you, but that's probably because I don't have much to say about this comic. It's, it's a very simple story, but on the previous page, may I mention, how bad it feels to see Trixie just <laughs> sunk hip deep into the quicksand or whatever and everything has modeled and, and ruined for her. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, why, why do these things always happen to me? Uh, feel the same, man. Feel the same. <laughs> that's, that's, path- that's pathetic, that's pathetic, touching and hilarious in so many levels. Comedy is based on pain. Comedy is based on misery indeed. And this is the epitome of it. Holy cow. But yeah, I know it's that. Uh, that's that goes again. Uh, your commentary about 
it's good to be the queen, not good to be the queen anymore. That goes to prove that the the, the rhythm of this comic is all over the place. The pacing, the pacing, that is the word I wanted to use. The pacing is not very good. It rushes. Is I know that they are hurting for you know time and pages. You have only twenty four pages to work all over this app, but it is hard to see to to take the scissors and say cut this part here, cut this part here, get rid of this, get rid of that. Um, because if you think about it, every single scene in this comic has a purpose. Like the the next one where Rainbow Dash is like, well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to take you out of here by flying, and she can't because the crown has powers to keep Trixie in place. Well, I, I do want to just add a quick commentary on the line. Uh, Rainbow accuses Trixie of sending her a fake invitation. And Trixie says, no, it was real. I really wanted you to come here. I wasn't sure you'd come if I contacted you directly, but I knew you'd come if I appealed to your ego. That's really the closest this comic comes to setting up the connection between these two characters. Trixie's in this mess because of her ego. Dash is here because of her ego. That's the one thing that they have in common. Their common interest is that they are all both, they are both full of themselves. Mm-hmm. Although, as, as Dash says, it's not ego if you can do it. It's technically not true. Yeah, because you can still be able to do it, but be an, an insufferable censor when doing it. But you can always be able to do something and be, be humble about it, but Rainbow Dash doesn't know the meaning of humility. She probably she thinks it's a snack. Yeah, she's like, what is humility? Can you eat it? <laughs> This is humble pie everyone try, is talking to me about. <laughs> uh, humble pie. You don't need to eat a humble pie, Silver. You are like the biggest, most amazing thing ever. <laughs> oh, this special. Soundboard, soundboard. <laughs> I was expecting the soundboard to appear. Uh, well, I'm sorry, but I, I don't have any sounds relevant to blushing. I mean, if anything, you're just making me a little gassy. Uh... I am going to shut up about the soundboard for the rest of my life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was a bad idea. But yeah, so yeah, they try to fly Trixie out of the out of the city, but see there's a, there's a force field there or something. But no, it's like the crown. The crown is the thing that is keeping her in place and she cannot leave unless the crown is off of her head. And why isn't the crown off of her head? Because it's too Actually, tight, she says, which is kind of funny. Uh, and again, this is a this I've been so harsh on the artwork uh, up until now. This is probably one of the best drawn pages as they're attempting their escape. I mean, this image of Trixie being pushed against an invisible wall. <laughs> mo- there are mimes who look at this page and think, oh, "I want to be able to do that." <laughs> oh yeah, that and is it, really good. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And even the gems on the crown are flashing red, kind of like an uh, invisible dog fence. Yeah, like, like those those collars that uh, sub. Yeah, exactly, and that's cool. I've even noticed the diamonds glowing red before. Yeah, well, it's, you're too busy looking at Rarity's adorable. Uh, sorry, Rarity, Trixie's adorable smushed face. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking- distracted by the. <laughs> You can even hear her. You can even hear her whining. I don't think this is working. And I say rarity because there's gems involved. You know, it's become association. <laughs> there's gems and she's a unicorn. So, yeah, it, one goes with the other. But, so, Dash doesn't give up. She has to get Trixie out of there. Uh, so they start to they, they start to build up a plan. But what is the plan? Well, Dash says that they have to build... Uh, she tells the, the the diamond dogs that they have to build up a stage uh, worthy of the queen. And try, uh, Trixie and Dash start to figure out a plan to get her out of there. But these diamond dogs are idiots. Look at the guy in the in the last pa- in the last panel of page twelve. That guy is trying to smash the nail using the wrong end of the hammer. <laughs> are you seeing that? And the other guy is trying to cut a board with the wrong end of the saw. What the hell? At least they are holding the brushes, right? <laughs> I I don't know I don't know how comedic this is coming from the Diamond Dogs because you know okay they are supposed to be dummy they are supposed to be the, the the antagonists of an episode and kind of the antagonists of this one, but in this one they are just coming off as simply dumb. They are just dumb. They are very 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 unbelievably dumb, and I'm like, what is up with that? 
And also the designs right here, they are kind of reminding me of the movie The Box Trolls. I don't know if you guys have watched it, but they are reminding me a lot of that movie. No, I haven't seen that one. You need to see it. It's actually pretty good. Right. Well, but at least we have a, a Diamond Dog John Milton on the bottom of page 13. He's got at least some intelligence. John Milton uh, once wrote, The power of kings and magistrates is nothing else but what is only derivative, transferred, and committed to them in the trust from the people to the common good for all, in whom power yet remains fundamentally and cannot be taken from them without a violation of their natural birthright. Wow. And here's this diamond dog saying that uh, executive power is, of course, derived from the people. A chief executive serves at the pleasure of the electorate. <laughs> so why is this guy not in charge? He may not be able to work a hammer, but he knows political talk. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm reading this now. Okay. That, this goes to prove how long have I stopped, uh, how long is, it's been since I last read this. Okay. Now this makes sense. I'm kind of rediscovering this comic with you guys here because, yeah, this is the reason why she cannot take the crown off. She has to, she cannot take it off because the diamond dogs believe that she can summon the gems and she can look for them. And it's not until they stop believing in her that she will be able to take off the crown. Yeah, which is kind of funny. She says it's on so tight, but when you see the artwork, it's barely on her head. Yeah, it's kind of like falling over her ear. So. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of funny. Just. So now, but Rainbow is actually being very clever about uh, gathering this intel. Normally, the comics have a tendency to show her as just all action, but very little thought. And she's doing a very good job here of actually being clever, being subtle. I mean, you know, yeah, in, she's, a, in, she, in a comedic way. But she's being smart. That is the least we can give to her, is that she's being smart about it, which is way more than we could expect from Season 1 Rainbow Dash. Whose, pro, whose way to fixing a problem will be like to punch it until it stops being a problem. <laughs> In this one, at least, she's thinking. She's using some deductive thinking, and she's like figuring things out. That that that's good. That's good. That's that's the dashi that I know and love. That's 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 good for her. She's been a good character in this comic. Yeah. In it this has. part of, it. yeah. But yeah, it's like uh, after she figures this out, she goes tell Trixie uh, the news and. Together they figure out, hey, uh, there is a way for me to get uh, get you out of here. Now they have to stop believing in you. And Trix is like, oh, don't worry, I can put up a show. But I uh, just find it funny that line: getting people lose the the Diamond Dogs lose faith in their. That's going to be hard. Who wouldn't want me as their queen? <laughs> I mean, the ego matter. The ego levels are off the charts. It's over 9,000. <laughs> oh, I could give you a list, says Rainbow Dash in a despondent tone. Oh, boy. Uh, she, she, looks, she looks severely annoyed. But the way that they have to get Trixie out of there, they, they, they have this acrobatic exhibition or something, of which we don't see a lot, actually, because that's not the focus of the comic, I guess, but it could have been cool to see a bit of Rainbow Dash's antics as she's flying away. Oh, no, it's that flight suit. I've lamented the designs of the pony outfits uh, from about a Cantalot wedding forward. Magical Mystery Cure was pretty good. but um, <laughs> I agree. Magical Mystery Cure had pretty good uh, dress designs. But this pink and yellow and blue flight suit for Rainbow is just like, yeah, it's not really, it's not really grabbing me. Rarity is screaming silently as she, she knows that there is a crime against fabulosity being committed. She just doesn't know what it is. <laughs> oh no. Very much so. Very much so. <laughs> but yeah, so as Rainbow Dash is distracting all, all the time on dogs, Trixie starts levitating all of the gems in front of the podium that she's standing on. Or, no, wait, no, behind, behind the podium where she's standing on. I didn't know that she was able to move all of those objects at the same time. I think we have underestimated Trixie when it comes to the, when it comes to her magic powers. It looks like she's doing it a few gems at a time, so... She's kind of struggling as well, look at that. So, I mean... That looks hard, you have no idea. Well, she's not an eloquent princess, so her power is limited. That is, that is true, but... Yeah, at the end of the exhibition, Trixie is so happy with that that she says, we are going to give her all of her gems, and we are going to declare her 
Uh, what, what, what does he actually say? He's like, because we are super generous people and it's, uh, we, we have to give her even more. And then that she starts going, come on, Trixie, come on, Trixie, you have to go further, further, you have to overdo it. And she, she's doing way too much. <laughs> we will not hunt for diamonds, we will hunt for mushrooms. <laughs> we will become the mush dogs. <laughs> Wow, that's pushing it, but hey. And every dog will be required to adopt a cat or a cute little kitten. And I love the expressions on the diamond dogs as she's saying this. Oh, Oh, yeah. I can can see just uh, kill, 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 kill. They took our diamonds. (laughs) They took took our jewels. (laughs) They took our jewels. They took our jewels. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they got bird. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But uh, yeah, and as you can see, actually, progressively in each one of the panels, Trixie's crown starts falling over, and uh, uh, towards the end, it's almost all around her her neck. And this is the part of the comic that kind of loses me. Uh, Rainbow does flies away, and then when she comes back, she performs her sonic rainbow. And because of the explosion, she manages to grab Trixie and get them both out of the Amondia, leaving the crown behind. And all I can think of is, how the hell did you grab Trixie for the crown to slip off of her body so Trixie doesn't get, you know, decapitated by the crown going through her? Like, I... Can somebody explain to me the way that she was grabbed well, in order I, to the, for the crown to fly away? The way I look at it is, or the way I think about it is like this. Rainbow Dash flew from behind to the front. Everybody's amazed at the boom. And then she did a 180, picked Trixie up, and then Trixie threw away the tiara and Debbie. You have way more imagination than well, me, my there, friend. There, there, there is in the replay when you when they explain how things work. Yeah. Personally, I just go by the uh, DC The Flash rules. Shut up. It's really fast. <laughs> Did he say that? Really? No. They, no, no they're, usually, they they're usually smarter about that. But at the end of the day, I don't think anyone really questions how Barry uh, can run that fast or so on and so forth. You know, all the physics. We kind of just – we kind of suspend disbelief on the hard rules usually unless the story isn't good and then those – we're less willing to suspend those questions. And this is pretty fun. I mean, it's a it's a clever plan that they explain, taking advantage of the Diamond Dog's love of jewels and Rainbow's distractive uh, ability. I do like that uh, it keeps it, it keeps the secret not just for the Diamond Dogs but also for the audience uh, for the for the reader reading the story. It's like you don't really know how it all worked out until the very end. It, it's it's actually a very clever plan, very very much like a magic trick on itself. That it doesn't, like a real magic trick, it doesn't involve magic to make the trick work. Or at least, you know, not unicorn teleportation magic. Because we know that Trixie isn't powerful enough to teleport and Rainbow Dash cannot do that because she's a Pegasus. But it's all smoke and mirrors. Which is what Trixie is all about. Smoke and mirrors. So that, that, that is a really, that is a really cool conclusion. At least for, you know, the segment regarding the stance on the Amondia. So in the last page, uh, Rainbow Dash and Trixie they um, they go their separate ways, with Trixie giving an adorable face on the third panel. Oh my God! Look at that! Look at that! She's so happy. Who would it be? She's so happy. You, you look at you look at that face, and it's impossible for you not to smile because it's such a happy face. Uh, so, yeah, they go their separate ways, and Trixie is looking for a new play to trick, uh, tr- trick to play, and I am, I'm saying, oh, that will happen in the Manhattan Mystery Time on arc. Now go check to the, to the main series, and it ends. Now, I, I will say that after I, after I talked about suspending disbelief, I do have one question mm-hmm. at the end. The Diamond Dogs built the stage, which actually turned out really well. I guess they can use those uh, pummels really nicely. Practice makes perfect. But did they not see they were installing gears and, and hinges? Well, they are a bit dense, so it'll take time for them to realize what happened. Although Maybe they, they thought they were building a giant clock. Maybe. I mean, uh, I, I, just fi- I just find it hilarious that uh, 
one of them is saying, "Hey, why are we? Why are? Why do we need to include these in a fixed platform?" Eh, I'm sure the queen has her reasons. Well, <laughs> follow the rules. It's okay. Goes to show that every henchman in every movie and TV show is stupid. It's like, why do the boss wants to build a nuclear silo? Never mind. Just keep going with the program, or don't go, and don't go to <laughs> union. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Valentine. You want to install a what in my neck? <laughs> oh, you want to put? You want to put what in my wrist? What? Uh, uh, funny enough, you actually know that they are starting to use uh, location chips on some companies in Europe. They say it's to open doors and all that, but and use copy machines. But we all know what it is about. Is that they can exploit explo- explode your stomach if you try to leave the company too early? Nano machines. Your, fif- your 15 minute break is over. Administering shock. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, my kinky. Ah, thinking it- about your wife and the work <laughs> on the job. Cannot do. <laughs> ah! Ooh, my kinky. <laughs> yeah, it turns out one in five guys likes it. <laughs> the plan is a failure. <laughs> Ooh, my kinky. <laughs> it's not working. They are enjoying <laughs> it. <laughs> so anyway, James. Uh, the final yeah, thoughts? Fi- yeah, let's, uh, let's go with, uh, final thoughts because I, I, I started this comic thinking that it was, uh, awesome and that I, I really liked it, but I, I, I'm ending it kind of like on the same guy you guys are ending it. <laughs> you started it. Like, like, it's a bit me. You're absolutely right. It's a bit me when you think about it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we've essentially taken your joy. Well, no, I don't feel good. <laughs> but no, no, it's not so much feeling uh, making me feel good. But uh, when you when you think about it, the focus of the comic is actually partially done right. It's partially okay. Is that Rainbow Dash and Trixie stay in character all the time, and the artwork is very enjoyable. It's very pretty, and it's uh, it's good to look at, except for like you know the flaws here and there. However, they don't do nothing about expanding the characters when it comes to like you know becoming friends. This is not like there was more spirit of the Friends Forever uh, series with the Manhattan mystery arc uh, between Trixie and Babsid because you see those two characters they don't know each other at all and through their interaction and the fact that they have a few things in common they end up becoming friends and they share some of the best moments I have seen in this comic series in this one however the comic starts with Dash and Trixie going their separate ways. And it ends with Dash and Trixie going their separate ways. They don't learn anything together. They just solve the situation that Trixie got herself into because she is our favorite bat monkey. And we love to see her suffer. And that's it. Hmm. That's really it. I mean, at least from from what I'm getting rereading the comic again uh, with you guys here, this is what I'm getting out of it, is that there is not much uh, development of them as 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 a unit. But what about you guys? What do you think? I'm very much in agreement. It was certainly not my intent to take the fun out of this comic. I mean, it's an enjoy, <laughs> it's an enjoyable romp. But uh, you, I agree that there's not a lot of meat to it. You know, there's a problem, they solve it. Check out the beat while the DJ revolves it. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, I I like seeing the Diamond Dogs again. I like seeing them as something other than an inept threat that's easily taken down by whining. Yeah, it is It is much better than just seeing them as the uh, retarded cousin of Gollum, which is what they were. They were very stupid. They were very dumb. But in this one, they are just a bit more, you know, active. Except for John Milton Dog. We'll, we'll come out and come up with a name we'll look for him. <laughs> Smarty. John, John Mil- Mutton. John Mutton. There, John. It is said, although that makes him sound like food. Mutton. <laughs> but John Mutton. I like it. <laughs> so yes, John Mutton will be the next political force in the Diamond Dog reform. He'll ha- he'll have a republic up by week's end because they don't know what the word republic means. I seriously need to get to make a poster of this character, like the Obama poster that says hope, <laughs> but one that says jewels or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. See, fan artists get on it. Yes, yes, I should get on it. Actually, you should do that, but. So it's an enjoyable but ultimately easily forgotten uh, story. I I picked it up and was sort of rediscovering it myself and thought, yeah, this one didn't stick with me. Yeah, I know what you mean. When when I first read this one, like I said earlier in the show, I thought it was an adventure where 
Rainbow Dash and Trixie had to work together to impress the Queen, something like that. But it turned out differently. It was not bad with how things went out. I think the meat of the comic here, where it was interesting, where is where Rainbow Dash was asking questions about Trixie's tiara or something like that. And they talk about it and stuff. Th- that was the high point. And then it comes to the climax of the comic where they did the escape thingy. And yay, it's done. I mean, other than that, like this for me, uh, meh. <laughs> That's all I can say. It's not, it's not good. It's not bad. Like Agnes Grabowska's art here is, well, it's not for everyone. I've said this from the very beginning and it's not for everyone. Yeah, I will say that this is an acquired taste of a comic. If you are a, if you're a fan of Rainbow Dash, check it out because she is very good in it. If you're a fan of Trixie, definitely check it out because she is like, uh, the TV tropes page describes her a large ham and she enjoys every single minute of it. And she's portrayed in a, in a recognizable, relatable and pretty likable manner. Like she doesn't come off as a jerk. She actually comes off as a more of a victim, actually. <laughs> victim of the circumstances. She got in there because she didn't want to. If you want to know more about the Diamond Dogs and you wanted to see more of the Diamond Dogs, definitely check it out. Now, if you want to see two characters that have nothing in common with each other except for one thing and want to see them interact and becoming friends, you should skip it. At least in a, the way that's the way that I, I put it. Do any of you guys rather give a a better description for it? I agree. <laughs> it's a story that shows unique problem-solving skills, but not unique characters. Both of them are a little bit of a cutout, and the and like you say, the only common element is their ego. Neither of which learning a lesson in humility. So I guess if you, if it's a celebration of anything, it's the it's the celebration of their respective talents, but not their common goals. It might have been enhanced if Rainbow had reflected on how much she would have liked to have been a ruler and then uh, realizing, hey, maybe that's not as easy as it sounds. You know, learn, yeah, learning are, from Trixie's struggle. Yeah, there is that way to, to um, there is a way to take it off. But then again, you also have to face the, the, the fact that this has to be entertaining for all audiences. So this one will be a comic that appeal, that could appeal more to the younger audience or the audience that doesn't want to think too much about it. But, those of us that keep the brain working at, at, at all times and don't want to switch it off, we are not going to get much out of this comic. But that's okay, because when you talk about big smiles, we, we can look at the preview for the next comic. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. That one is go- Oh, that is going to be an interesting one to talk about. <laughs> and uh, th- that will be uh, issue number seven, right, of the Friends Forever series that stars Princess Luna and Pinkie Pie which is written by Jeremy Whitley with art by Tony Fleeks. But that review is going to be for next week. As for this week, we just finished. So uh, thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for following us. And uh, thank you for being there. Remember that without you guys, uh, we wouldn't be able to keep doing this. So you are the guys that keep us going. Uh, so signing off for now. This has been James Cork. And I have been Omar Sanzo. And I am a John Muttonist. <laughs> I believe. Muttons. I have a dream. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, dear me. Stop it before I start offending people. Sign, <laughs> sign us off, Norman. Put on the music. Right quick. Put on the music. All right. Music starts here now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See you guys next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. I don't know where he keeps getting these sound boxes. I just took 50 away from him. He just keeps taking them off. Ah!